Hallelujah. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. May his grace and peace be with you. May he fill our hearts with joy. Though people may be joining us from many regions, we acknowledge that the Church of St. Stephen in the Fields stands on occupied land, the traditional territory of the Mississaugas of the Credit, an Anishinaabe people, the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, and the Wendat and Petun nations, land covered by the dish with one spoon wampum belt covenant. Treaty 13 and the Williams Treaty are also relevant to this territory. We acknowledge that we have broken the treaties. We acknowledge the damage done by colonialism and the role that our church has played in this. And we pledge ourselves to work for a future of justice and reconciliation. Is known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy, welcoming sinners and inviting us to this table. Let us confess our sins confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you pardon, and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace, everybody. Peace, everyone.
Peace be with you. Peace, everybody. Peace, everyone. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you. We give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayers. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit. In the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, your Son Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. Give us grace to love one another and walk in the way of his commandments. Who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. But filled with the Holy Spirit, Stephen gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Look, he said, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. But the crowd covered their ears and with a loud shout all rushed together against him. Then they dragged him out of the city and began to stone him. And the witnesses laid their coats at the feet of a young man named Saul. And while they were stoning Stephen, he prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he knelt down and cried out in a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. And when he had said this, he died. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In you, O Lord, have I taken refuge. Let me never be put to shame. Deliver me, your righteousness. Incline your ear to me. Make haste to deliver me. Be my strong rock, a castle to keep me safe. For you are my crag and my stronghold. For the sake of your name, take me out of the net that they have secretly set for me. For you are my tower of strength. Into your hands I commend my spirit. You have redeemed me, 
My times are in your hand. Rescue me from the hand of my enemies and from those who persecute me. To save me. Second reading, Peter, verse 2 to 10. A reading from the first epistle of Peter. Like newborn infants, long for the pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow into salvation, if indeed you have trusted that the Lord is good. Come to him, a loving stone, though rejected by mortals, yet chosen and precious in God's sight. And like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in scripture, see, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. To you then who believe, he is precious, but for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the very head of the corner. And a stone that makes them stumble and a, and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the word as they were destined to do. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. I am the way, the truth, and the life, says the Lord. Lord be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said to the disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will also come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. 
No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, Show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The works that I, the words that I say to you I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do. And in fact, will do greater works than these because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask me in my, in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be now and always acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. There is honestly too much potential material in this week's readings to cover fully. Arguably too much even in the Gospel. Aside from anything else, I'm going to have to ignore almost entirely the brief appearance of our patron Stephen in the first reading. He'll get his due attention at our patronal feast in the summer. I'm just going to pause for a moment so that Sue Ann can be admitted. Anne has joined us. We want her to come in. Ah, great. Right. So, having said, I'm largely going to ignore Stephen until the summer. I also won't spend as much time as I might like to spend on the fascinating Greek word in the Epistle of Peter that's translated as spiritual. Spiritual milk, a spiritual building. The word is actually logikos, and its primary Greek meaning actually is closer to logical. It, it usually means rational, making decisions based on reason, able to act in a considered and thoughtful way rather than out of instinct or knee-jerk emotion. And it has some of that meaning here. The spiritual building of which we are part is not made of dumb stones piled on top of each other without our will, but reasoning stones, voluntary and deliberate parts of God's building of reality, thoughtful and conscious actors. It can also mean pertaining to speech or speaking, but in a Christian context, in a tradition which includes the Gospel of John, it has an almost untranslatable meaning to be logikos, is to be filled with the Logos, with the Word of God. It is to carry the Spirit of Christ. The milk which we are fed is the milk of the Logos. The building into which we are being built is the building of the Logos, the home of the Logos. And that takes us, in a way, towards at least parts of our Gospel reading. Um, the Gospel reading today is almost a sort of a greatest hits medley. Uh, multiple passages which are frequently quoted and indeed often misquoted or yanked out of context in ways which significantly distort their real meaning. First of all, we need to look at the reading's context. The exchange in today's Gospel takes place on the night of the Last Supper. It's part of the long section of John's Gospel known as the Farewell Discourse. 
the last teaching which Jesus would give to his friends before going into the night towards his arrest and death. And let not your hearts be troubled, he says in that context. Difficult advice, it would seem, for that time, or for this time. It doesn't mean it can't mean that there is not confusion, fear, and grief. The disciples are about to walk into a series of terrible events in which they will be powerless and will mostly fail to rise to challenge. They are about to witness their teacher murdered by the powers, the apparent end of all hope, the knowledge of their own inadequacy, then days of hiding, rumors, uncertainty, before a restoration almost impossible to grasp and a sending out for which they could not have believed themselves to be sufficient. They are not being told that they should be cheerful and optimistic throughout all of this. But they are being told that on some profound level they are known and held and preserved. It was that knowledge which enabled Stephen to continue speaking his truth even at the cost of his life. It is that knowledge which we must all draw upon to maintain us in our risks and tasks and callings. In my father's house are many dwelling places. We're accustomed to hearing this at funerals, I think, mostly. So we become used to thinking of it as relating to our, our shelter after the end of our lives in this world. That's not wrong, but I think that as so often we've shifted the emphasis of what Jesus is saying in an otherworldly direction when he is talking as much about our lives right now. Where Jesus is going is not simply into some other world or some other life, but into the ongoing life of God, present both in this world and beyond it. The place he prepares for us in his life, his death, and his resurrection is not a place we can only reach by dying. It is a place in which God holds and tends us always, and right now is part of always. Wherever we are in the world, whatever our callings, however safe or endangered, however stable or chaotic, we are also in God's house, in the room God has prepared for each of us and for us only, each precious, irreplaceable, beloved person. The many rooms, the many dwellings within the life of God are ours now, and we are always invited home. Where we are going, is not profoundly separate from where we are now. It is a place which in some part of our being we do already know, as Jesus tells Thomas, for it is a place in which our very being is grounded. And I think it is important that here, as always in Jesus' teaching, the emphasis is on diversity. There are many dwellings, for there are many individuals. God's home for us does not compel us all to fit into a single mode. We are known and loved as the specific people we are, where we are, with all our particular pains and joys, and we are made part of the building of these rooms for others, the stones of the logical home. But of course it is true that when Jesus spoke of where he was going on that night, he was speaking most immediately of Calvary. When he says to Philip, whoever has seen me has seen the Father, he is telling the disciples, telling all of us, that God is revealed not in power or glory, but in everything they have seen in their time with Jesus, this carpenter's child, this crosser of social boundaries, this one who is willing to touch lepers and dead girls, to consort with both sex workers and imperial collaborators, to walk around his little occupied country talking to unimportant people, this person undefended and strangely free, but revealed most of all in what seems at first to be the greatest defeat, God's entire self-offering in love. The works 
we are asked to believe and emulate are these, to listen to the outcast, to reach out to the lonely, to wash tired feet when we can, to lay down our violence and our self-regard. And when Jesus says that we will do greater works, it is works of this nature, not miracle and wonder that he's talking about. The passage which follows, specifically the sentence, I am the way, the truth, and the life, has often been used to promote Christian exclusivism, to suggest that formal adherence to particular Christian doctrine is the one and only route to salvation. And I had that very sentence uh, screamed into my face a week ago by people trying to shut down a drag queen story hour at my local library. But Philip isn't asking for a doctrine. He's asking which direction to walk. And he's being told that the direction, the model to follow, is the person who has fed all his friends, including Judas, with the bread and wine, which is his body and blood, who has knelt to wash their feet. The incarnate word of God walking the dry hills of ancient Palestine among the ill and the afflicted and the outcast, nailed to a piece of wood by the forces of empire, is not a doctrine but a person whose way, whose life, can only be known in living. This is our way. This is our truth, our life. The way revealed to us in that human life, the way of undefended love. The truth that this is what God does, who God is. That all our imaginings of a God of power and strength, the God who punishes or rewards or takes vengeance, are only the projections of our crooked little hearts. So we must let those hearts be healed, piecemeal, slowly, as all our healing happens. Let those hearts be held in the midst of all our pain. Let our hearts, in the image of Ezekiel, become hearts of flesh. Let us release the false gods which surround us, the great gods of the ravenous economy demanding human sacrifice, the gods which build walls between ourselves and others, the small gods of pride and self-reliance which would make us deny our own weakness and our interdependence. We are not freed from pain or error or failure, and we are not protected from the storms of history. But in all the struggle of this world, we are still all held together in God's house. We are all neighbors, all relations, and we depend upon each other. And we depend even more on the sustaining love of God, which is always building us a home always inviting us in, preparing the place with, that is both shared with all creation and intimately our own. The room you barely dare to imagine, where every good room and every moment of safe shelter you have known in this life may hint at, where each one of us is suddenly, perfectly, at home. Let us confess our faith as we say. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, True God from true God, begotten, not made, 
of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. <clears throat> the Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray to our risen Savior on behalf of the church, the world, and all people according to their need. For the blessing of the springtime bursting forth with rich soil for planting, cool rains to water, sufficient sun to cause that which is planted to flourish, we pray especially for regions experiencing drought. Send the rains to Jaén, Spain, to the Po River Valley in Italy, for the emergency wildfires that are burning in Alberta. Help us to look for your goodness growing to see that people the world over are returning to gatherings that were canceled during the COVID-19 pandemic. We praise you for the hope and joy of graduations again, weddings well attended, family reunions planned. We pray especially for the people of the United Kingdom as they prepare for the coronation of King Charles III. Make him a king who is guided by your spirit and sufficiently strong to do the right thing, even when it's, it is unpopular. We pray for Ukraine now in their second year of fighting to protect families, homes, hospitals, schools, their entire way of life. And we pray for the United States, where mass shootings happen daily in places that shelter the most vulnerable citizens, schools, hospitals, and celebrations of every kind. To the bidding, let us pray. I invite you to pray together with the response. We ask this in Jesus' name. We ask this in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus, for being the way to your Father's house, the truth that sets us free, and the life which raises us out of sin and death. Thank you for being the love that never lets us go. Give us grace to share your love with everyone we meet, especially those who have lost their way, strayed from the truth, and are haunted by death. Empowered by the Lord's promise that he will do whatever we ask in his name, let us pray. We ask this in Jesus' name. Make the whole church your house of living stones, holy, precious, your prized possessions and beloved body. Let its words and deeds proclaim the excellence of your salvation. 
Use it to call many people out of darkness into your marvelous light. Let us pray. We ask this in Jesus' name. Like Stephen, there are many today who are persecuted and tortured for proclaiming you as Lord. Give them the grace and strength that you gave Stephen to fearlessly speak your truth in love, to forgive and pray for their enemies, and to remain faithful to the end. Let us pray. We ask this in Jesus' name. We pray today in the worldwide Anglican cycle of prayer for the Reformed Episcopal Church of Spain, extra-provincial to the Archbishop of Canterbury. Your prayers are asked in the Anglican Church of Canada for the Right Reverend Susan Bell, Bishop, the Most Reverend Colin Johnson, Assistant Bishop, and the clergy and people of the Diocese of Niagara. In the Evangelical Lutheran Church in Canada for Bishop Sid Hujin, the people and rostered ministers of the Saskatchewan Synod. And in our diocesan cycles for the chapel of St. George Gore's Landing. And in our diocesan social justice and advocacy cycle for St. George on Young, its work as a pickup center for out of the cold programs its monthly distribution of gift cards and TTC tokens, refugee resettlement, ESL classes, its support of the local food bank and local community housing. For St. George on the Hill, it's a Etobicoke Learning Cooperative, Prayer Shawl Ministry, and involvement in the Out of the Cold program. And for St. George Allendale, its deacons covered, support of Hospice Simcoe, the David Busby Center, Samaritan House, and Grove Park Seniors Home. Let us pray. We ask this in Jesus' name. Lord, we want to be your disciples, but we are afraid of ridicule, rejection, or persecution. Give us grace to be like Stephen, always praying for others to repent and believe in you. Let us always build up faith in you alone, our head and cornerstone. Let us pray. We ask this in Jesus' name. Thank you for everyone in this congregation who supports the ministry of word and sacrament through their faithful work. Fill them with your Holy Spirit. Prosper all they do to share the gospel. Give them joy in serving you and your people. Let us pray. We ask this in Jesus' name. Lord, there are so many who have lost their way in life. There are so many who insist this, there's no such thing as real truth. There are so many who are dying without knowing your love. Please help us to notice them, to walk with them, and to find ways of slipping their hand into yours. Let us pray. We ask this in Jesus' name. Remind the rulers, the rulers of the nations that you, are, that you alone are king of the nations. Teach them to use their authority and power to care for the poor and needy, to do justice and love mercy, and to walk humbly before you. Frustrate the way of the wicked. Make us all beautiful with your righteousness and compassion. Let us pray. We ask this in Jesus' name. Guide, protect, and strengthen all who defend life and liberty here and abroad. May they always walk in pathways of integrity and justice. When they are wounded, bring healing, hope, and peace to them and to their loved ones. 
when their task is done, bring them home in honor. Let us pray. We ask this in Jesus' name. Bless, heal, comfort, and sustain everyone who cries out to you for help, especially Phyllis, Vanessa, Becky, Tasia, Beck, Lavina, Michael, Victor, Leonie, Dave, Sue Ann, Terry, Jean, Alicia, Georgina, Andy Ali, Maria, Cheryl, Emily, Rena, Laura, Shirley, Catherine, Jose, Joanne, Brianna, Bodhi, Jane, Kim, Liam and family, Joe, Parissa, Magdalena, Tucker, Bill and Suzanne, Diane, Jacobus and family, Yvonne, Suzanne, Catherine, Mary, Martin. With the psalmist, cause them to say, happy are they who have the good, the, who have the God of Jacob for their help, whose hope is in the Lord, their God, who keeps his promise forever. Let us pray. We ask this in Jesus' name. Breathe your spirit upon those in our parish family. Hear our prayers of gratitude and thanksgiving, especially for Zoe Henderson, Blake Hentridge, Maggie and Simone Heldwick, and Ken Simmons, Helga Holland, Adonica Huggins, and Atiba Flurry Huggins, Jessica Humphreys and Finn, Charlie Huskin, Marguerite Hunt, Vincent and Rebecca Hunt, Christy, Raphael, Raphael Jr., and Regis Hionegbo. Let us pray. We ask this in Jesus' name. Lord Jesus, we often hear your promise at funerals. If I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and take you to myself, that where I am, you may be also. Therefore, we entrust into your keeping our beloved dead. Give us grace to believe your promise. Help us grow in holiness. Strengthen us in compassion and service. Be for us and for all whom you love the way to your Father's house, the truth which sets us free from bondage to sin, evil, and death, and the life which eternally transforms us into your likeness. Remember in your prayers all those who have died in recent days. We also pray for those whose anniversary of death occurs around this time of year. Rest eternal, grant unto them, O Lord. And may light perpetual shine upon them. May they rest in peace and rise in glory. Amen. We praise and magnify you, dear Jesus. You prepare a place for us in the home of the mother and father of us all. Draw us more deeply into yourself through scripture read, water splashed, bread broken, wine poured, so that when our hearts are troubled, we will know you more completely as the way, the truth, and the life. Accept our prayers and lay them at the feet of your Father, who with you and the Holy Spirit reigns gloriously as our risen Lord and our God now and forever. Amen. The church of Christ in every age be set by change but spirit led must claim and test its heritage and keep on rising from the dead. A 
across across the world across the street the victims of injustice cry for shelter and for bread to eat and ever live until they die then let the servant church arise a king church that belongs to me a partner in christ's sacrifice and clothed in christ's humanity for he alone whose blood was shed can cure the fever in our blood and teach us how to share our bread and feed the starving multitude we have no mission but to serve in full obedience to our lord to care for all without reserve and spread his liberating word let us pray Gracious God, you show us your way and give us your divine life. May everything we do be directed by the knowledge of your truth. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, the risen Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you, lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Blessed are you, gracious God, creator of heaven. We give you thanks and praise for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who has taken away the sin of the world. By his death he destroyed death. And by his rising to life again, he has won for us eternal life. Therefore, joining our voices with the whole company of heaven, we sing our joyful hymn of praise to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth, I follow your glory. 
for the goodness and love you have made known to us in creation, in calling Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, a death he freely accepted. Our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, Father, according to his command, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. <clears throat> we pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts. They may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice that we, made acceptable in him, may be sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, reconcile all things in Christ and make them new. And bring us to that city of light where you dwell with all your children. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church and the author of our salvation, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. As our Savior taught us, let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Lord, we 
died with you on the cross. Now we are raised to new life. We were buried in your tomb. Now we share in your resurrection. Live in us that we may live. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace, grant us Let us pray. God of love, in this Eucharist we have heard your truth and shared in your life. May we always walk in your way. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord. Amen. Glory to God. Whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of God which passes understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. And death we flee. And those who to the Father seek must seek Him. Thou art the way, thy word, which wisdom can impart. Thou only canst inform the mind and pure. Thou art the life, the redeemed, claims thy conquering heart. And those who put trust in thee, nor death nor hell shall Thou art the way, a true. Just that way to know, but trust to keep, life to win, whose choice it Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. And thank you, everyone. Um, we've got a few 
extra things going on this week. Tomorrow, Sunday, of course, we have our 10.30 a.m. in-person service. We also have Evensong at 7.30. It is the eve of the Feast of Julian of Norwich. So we will be doing some Julian of Norwich themed material within, within the structure of Evensong. It's a lovely, quiet, contemplative service, a good way to end a day, so if you can come on Sunday at 7.30 p.m. at the church, you'd be very welcome. Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday we have evening prayer in the church, um, in the side chapel at 5 p.m. Uh, Tuesday afternoon we also have our next vaccine clinic, 1 p.m. to 6 p.m. in the parish hall, and it's a, uh, a low barrier, um, easy to access COVID-19 booster clinic for anyone who uh, needs or is eligible for a COVID-19 booster. Anyone six months of age and up can, uh, can be vaccinated at the clinic. Um, Tuesday evening, there are actually three separate events connected to us going on. Um, so you have your pick. Of course, the Bible study and meditation is on Zoom at 7.30 p.m. as, as every week with 20 minutes of silent meditation and discussion of the gospel for the coming Sunday. Um, in the church, at prob probably at 6 p.m., Friends of Kensington Market will be having a meeting to talk about some, some of the ideas the city is proposing for Kensington safe streets, which are causing a fair bit of concern in the neighborhood. So if you are interested in that, want to find out more about that, that'll be in the church. And in the parish hall, we will have Street Knit, which is a gathering of people who get together once a month to knit hats and scarves and other items for um, our friends and community members who are living on the streets. So all kinds of stuff going on on Tuesday. On Wednesday, we have a said mass in the chapel at noon and uh, an evening prayer. And. Uh, our drop-in, of course, is Friday 6 to 10 p.m., uh, breakfast Saturday and Sunday 7 a.m. to 8.30 a.m. And we've got some good new volunteers for those, but more are always welcome and always helpful. Um, a couple of things to announce coming up. Um, first thing to announce is I am going to be away from May 15th to 25th. I'm still sorting out who's going to be covering services, but they'll, they'll get covered somehow. Um, it was it was possibly a slightly premature plan, but anyway, I am going to be away. So um, Janet and Mother Andrea and Max and Tucker and everybody else all between them will, uh, will keep things ticking over. On Sunday, May 28th, um, I will definitely be back because we will be baptizing Robin Bowdish McCabe the second child of uh, Brent and Misha, and a s sibling of Ziggy. So uh, please try to be there on, on Pentecost on May 28th. Also coming up, we finally have a date for Max's uh, transfer of orders, which will enable him to function as an Anglican priest. It's a little awkwardly timed. It will be Saturday morning at 10.30 a.m. on June 10th. Saturday, June 10th. We'll also still have a Sunday morning service, obviously, but the bishop will be here on Saturday. Really, this was the only way we could get a bishop before the fall. So, uh, Saturday, June 10th, Max's reception of orders into the Anglican Communion. It will be a, a wonderful occasion, and uh, even though the timing is a little awkward, I really urge everybody, if you can, to, uh, to try to attend. Um, as soon as Max is permitted to function as an Anglican priest, he will be appointed as an honorary assistant at St. Stephen's. So that will be terrific. Um, it's, uh, it's very exciting news. Uh, at some point we will do a dedication of our new fire panel because we have a name for it and everything and we would like to invite the person for whom it is named. Uh, it's a long story. I'll tell it to you when we've actually set a date for that. Um, but I think that that is everything that I need to announce for now. So I will hand over to Adonica. Blessings, Mother Maggie, Mother Andrea, Deacon Elizabeth, 
and Father Max. Uh, thanks to our wardens, Leroy, Annette, Tucker, and Martin. Appreciation to our technician, choir, musicians, intercessor, readers, uh, including Zoe, Zenling, Sarah, Janet, Leroy, and Roxy. And thanks to everyone else who assisted in any way, shape, or form to allow us to have this virtual service today. We invite, we thank, first of all, those who attend all of our services on all of our platforms. We invite you to join us live on Zoom so that after the postlude, you can join us with your coffee or tea for some lively conversation for as short or as long a period of time as you can remain with us. We would enjoy your company. Thanks so much. Thank you.